Hello! I'm Data David, and today we're doing a special BAM episode from this hotel room on GAIQ. What is GAIQ? Google Analytics Individual Qualification Certification. I have done this certification many years ago. The first time I failed, then I had to redo it, and I passed. And then my then employer could actually hire me as a Google Analytics consultant. So that was a bit embarrassing. Now I have my own business, so no one really checks for certifications. But I thought it would be pretty cool if I would just take the exam without having prepared anything. I found this page, how to prepare for Google Analytics IQ. And here we have, you have to sign up for Google. Okay, so this is the first part of the exam to realize or understand how to Let's do it as an individual profile. Sign into partner. Oh my God. Uh, okay, hold. Join Google Partners. Join Google Partners. Join now. Let's be partners. Uh, no. Certifications. Yes, here we go. Study. Shoes. Why is this? Analytics study for this exam won't do that. Fundamentals, I know that. F principles, of course. Mouse pose, say, let's do that. So we can do a bit of this. E commerce analytics. <laughs> Mobile. Uh, select language, English. Take 90 minutes. Okay, I might speed these things up. 80% passing score. I think we will. Manage that, I hope. I don't know, I haven't prepared. You're about to take the analytics exam. Keep in mind once you... Do... Okay, I, I, okay, I have to confirm the answer and then I can go back. Okay, go. What is the URL parameter that auto-tagging appends to an address destination URL? I've shown you in a video. Auto-tagging, GCLID, bam. Uh, the measurement protocol is a set of standard rules. You should think measurement room. You can send data from a point of. You use the measurement protocol for like offline systems. So, oh, A and B and C. You cannot upload with the measurement protocol. It's A and B. You can do both from web connected device or from a kiosk point of sale system that's connected to the internet. I hope. Solutions gather allows you to import to share which of the following reporting. Oh, uh, this I don't know. I, 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 I never use the solutions gallery. Custom reports, segments, and goals. I think everything. A, B, and C. <sighs> Sweating. Which reporting or data collection feature do you get access to by activating advertising features in Google Analytics? Demographic and remarketing. I don't know. Interest categories. I never use those reports. I think it's all three. Or do they mean some kind advertising? I think it's B and C. I think it's all three. Uh, I don't know. Okay, all three. Boom. What is an attribution modeling of analytics? I know what that is. It's how you define the last to whatever click and what they do. A set of rules that determine which AdWords ads are created you could be. Set the rules for assigning sessions to new. No. The set of set of rules that determine how credit for sales and conversions is assigned to touch points in conversion paths. Yes. The set of rules for assigning specific interest categories. No, this one is it. Boom. Which of the following statements is true about multi-channel funnels reports? A, you can create your own custom channel grouping in addition to the default. Yes. Yes, you can this. B, the channel labels that you see in the channel refer are defined as part of the channel labels that you see in the multi-channel are part of the MCF channel grouping. Yes. C. When you share a custom channel grouping, only the configuration information is shared. Your data 
Yes, I think all of these. The Google Analytics SDK or tracking code sends campaign and traffic source data through a number of different fields. Which of the following is one of the fields used to send traffic data? Which of the following is one of the fields used to send campaign or traffic source data? Aha, uh -huh, okay. Campaign medium. Of course, it's this. I, I misread the answer, the question. You decide to run an email campaign that includes a link to your website. What would you need to do in order to track traffic to your site from this email campaign? UTM tags. It's not this default. Email traffic was a referral. No, email traffic can be tracked using manual tagging with UTM parameters. Boom. Easy. Yeah. What is the main purpose of the multi-channel funnel report? To show which goals are bringing the most revenue. No, not main purpose. To evaluate the interaction of multiple channels in the conversion. I think this. To analyze the funnel step for multiple. Uh, no. To see which channels result in the highest number. It's it's B. You can analyze funnel steps for multiple goal. No, you can't. It's it's only B. It's only B. True or false? If a user views one page of a website, completes an event on this page, and then leaves the site. One page, completes event, then leaves, the session will be counted as a bouncing Google Analytics. No, because you have to activate non-interaction for that event. So by default, it's not non-interaction. So it will be interaction. Because there's a hit. All right, let's continue. Which of the following metrics would most strongly suggest a poorly performing website? Bounce rate above 90%. Could be bad. It's a blog. Could be good. Bounce rate, low bounce rate often good. Percent new visits 90, above 90%. Could be some cookie errors. Average session duration above. No, none of these answers would suggest that it's poor, poor. I don't know. Each dimension and metric has a scope that aligns with the level of the analytics data hierarchy, user session or hit level. In most cases, it only makes sense to combine dimensions and metrics in your reports that belong to the same scope. Yes, that's true. It's true. It does only make sense often. Which of the following is a valid dimension metric combination? Session and page, then the the page will be the landing page, so it could be it's valid, but I wouldn't recommend it. Bounce rate and event, uh, no, because bounce rate suggests that you didn't have an event. Sessions and city, yes, they they come together because session you are in the same city in Google Analytics. All of the above are valid dimension metric combination. I wouldn't put bounce rate. I wouldn't put bounce rate with the event action unless it's a non-interaction event. But I, you could do this, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would do. I, I go for C. You recently set up a new AdWords campaign, and you're interested in using Smart Goals to optimize your performance. Which of the following is a prerequisite to using Smart? That's a new feature. I haven't read up on that. You must have at least 500 sessions from AdWords, ad clicks in the Google Analytics. I don't think so. B, you must modify your tracking code to support smart goal data collection. No, that's you don't have to do that. You must enable smart goals in your property settings. I think you have to. The select Google Analytics must have at least 10,000. Ah! Uh, I'm bad at smart goals. Selected. I, I don't remember that you have seen that you have to. No goals. You put goals in, in, in views. So it's not with the property. So I think GA has to have 1,000 page views over 30 days to, to be able to figure out what the goal is by itself. So isn't it? A visitor comes to your site but stops looking at pages and generating. Events, which of the following will occur by default? A visitor comes to your web, he stops looking at pages 
and it's generating events. No, each event is a hit. So the visitor session expires by default after 30 minutes of initiative. Yes, the visitor session expires after 5 minutes of initiative. No. The visitor session expires once the visitor has exited your site. No, because it can come back and then it keeps on. Google Analytics does not keep track of sessions. That's so once it stops generating the events, then it stops. Which of the following is a benefit of using segments in your data analysis? <laughs> I always use segments. It's always good. You can compare behavior metrics for groups that use like converters versus not correct. You can analyze your users and or their sessions according to singular model sessions conditions. That is correct. You can isolate and analyze specific conversion paths using conversion segments. You can do that in the multi-channel funnel report. You can permanently modify the data in your view, for example, excluding you can't no, you cannot do that. So what A I guess this is A, this is B, this is C. So it's A, B, and C, not D. Boom. Okay, let's continue. Google Analytics uses which model by default when attributing conversion values in non-multi last non-direct click. I have a video on that topic. The Google Analytics data model consists of users, sessions, and interactions. Hits also, interactions equals hits. In this hierarchy, interactions include page views, yes, events, yes, transactions, yes. All of those. Boom. Why would it be useful to assign a value to your goal in Google Analytics? Because you perhaps you don't have an e-commerce transaction, but you know that a lead is worth, I don't know, $500 or 10 crowns or something like that. Assigning goal value allows you to track your actual revenue from your conversions. Yes, it could be the actual value from your conversions. Assigning goal value B allows you to compare goal conversions and measure changes. In Well, yes, B, yes. C, assigning a goal value allows you to use the funnel visualization report to analyze the conversion funnel on your website. Okay, you don't have to use the value to use the funnel visualization. And you don't have to add the goal value to compare the goal conversion and measure changes and improvements. So this is the only one. This was a trick question. Assigning goal value allows you to track the revenue from your conversions. Yes. You receive an intelligence alert. Oh, haven't used those in a while. Notifying you that there has been an unexpected spike in your traffic. Which of the following could be possible for the reason of this spike? Tracking code has been altered and is reporting incorrectly. Could be like that. Like multiple page views. Well, bam, 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 bam page. There is a new referral source that is directing a lot of new traffic to the site. Could be. There is unidentified referral traffic that is likely bot traffic. <laughs> Yes, could be. New pages of subdomains that have been recently indexed in organic search, which will lead that more traffic is coming in. Yes, all of the above. That was easy. It was easy. <laughs> which of the following are possible users of views within a single Google Analytics account? A, to look more closely at traffic to a specific subdomain. Yes, you can do that. B, to look more closely at traffic to a specific part of a site. Page was, yes, you can do that. I rarely do that one. I rather use segments instead. But you can. C, C, to limit a user's access to a subset of data. Yes, you can create a new view so with just a subset of the data and then just share that view. It's all of those. All of those. Boom. Which of the following metrics is available when site search tracking is enabled? Sessions with search. Number search. Yes, it's. Search exists, yes. Time after search, yes. Search for, yes. Easy, all of those. You should use site search, it's really good. How would you track visitors coming from an email or newsletter campaign? Didn't we do this before? No, turning auto tagging doesn't matter, it's only for AdWords. And this will track visitors coming from any campaign automatically? No, you, not, not really, it doesn't, no. By manually tagging the destination URLs of the campaign, I think this one. D, it is not possible to track this come from non It's not correct. It's this one. C. When analyzing the gold flow report, you see that many users are dropping off after the second step in the funnel. Ooh. With this information, you can infer that 
Here you're possibly targeting the wrong audience who is not interested in your product. Could be. The navigation between the second and third steps of the purchase process could be improved. Could be. C. You should consider directing traffic through a different entrance point for your goal. You should consider. Yes, I think all of those. Let's do it. <sighs> Google Analytics can collect behavioral data from which systems? Well, it doesn't do it automatically, but it, you can have the e-commerce platform send data, and you can have the mobile application send data, and then you can have the online point of sale systems. I think the answer is E, all of those. Oh, it's frustrating. I can't go back. I don't remember what I answered. You define a destination URL goal by creating a new dashboard to report. No, that's not true. B, adding the conversion ID to the tracking code. No. Adding the view goals and specifying the request URL of the conversion page. Yes. Adding the e-commerce code. No. It's C. Which of the following is an ad advantage of implementing Google Tag Manager. I love Google Tag Manager, so it's all, everything is an advantage. You can add Google Analytics to your site without adding, yes. Well, you have to add the site code, add the Google Tag Manager code, but still. B, you can add AdWords tags to your site without add, yes. C, you can add non-Google tags to your site without, yes. D, you can change configuration in your mobile app without, yes. All of those, correct. Go Google Tag Manager. What is the benefit of using Google Analytics for remarketing? You can target customers who have previously been to your site with customers creatives. Yes. You can create remarketing lists without making any changes to this. Yes. Uh, you can create remarketing lists based on custom segments and target, for example. Yes, 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 all of those. You see? Okay, come on. Which report should give you insights into how many display conversions were assisted by search paid traffic? Display conversions? were assisted. Oh, it's multi-channel funnel reports. <laughs> oh, so multi-channel funnel reports have no data. Oh, bad. It could be that the timing is it has a two-day lag. You haven't implemented goals for e-commerce. It's probably that one. It's not B. That doesn't have an effect. You're not using, it says, uh, you're not using content. No, you have to set up goals. No, we can set up goals, goals without the funnels. So it's A. The user ID feature lets you associate engagement data from multiple devices and different sessions with unique IDs, yes. In order to use the user ID feature in analytics, you must use Google Time. It's not correct. Be able to generate your own unique IDs, yes. C, create a new analytics account for user ID reporting. You don't have to create a new analytics account for user ID reporting. And the average user view will have a small section that says user ID coverage. D, all of the above, no. It's, it's B, it's B, I hope. In the multi-channel funnel report, which of the following methods should be most useful in measuring how many conversions were initiated by a paid search? How many conversions were initiated by page search? Since conversion value doesn't have it with the value. Conversion rate, no, you don't have conversion rate like that there. First interaction click conversion. No, because that is the first interaction click that converted, but we're interested in the one that came first through page search and then converted. None of these metrics. Whew. Which of the following questions can be answered using the goal flow report? Are there a lot of unexpected exits from a step in the middle of my conversion? Yes, you can do that. Do visitors usually start my conversion process from the first step or somewhere in the middle? Yes, you can do that. Is there a place in my funnel where traffic loops back to the beginning? You can do that as well in the GoFlow. Are there any steps in my conversion process that don't perform well on mobile devices compared to desktop? Yes, because you can use segments. All of these above. Let's continue. Adding filters to a view in Google Analytics allows you to Filters to view. Exclude visits from a particular IP address. Yes, you can do this. Replace complicated URLs with read readable text strings. I can I do that often. Modify historical data. No, no, no. You can't do that. A and B only. <laughs> Which analytics API allows you to access your Google Analytics account configuration data? The management API. 
configuration data. I think you can configure. I don't do it often. I think you can. It's not the core reporting and it's not the embed. I think you can with the management API. I don't think there's a separate API for configuration. Is there a configuration API? No, I think it's the management API. Because the management API. Hmm. I don't think you can. The management API, you can add users and remove users and. But can you change account configuration data? No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. I think it's. No, you can't. Which of the following attribution models would be useful for evaluating ads and campaigns that are designed to create initial awareness about a brand? Initial. So if we use last interaction model, it's only the last interaction that counts. It doesn't really matter because we want to know what initiated the awareness of the brand. So I would say the first interaction model because that gives all the credit to the first interaction. The linear models just give equal credit to all interactions. Last non-direct click model is like the standard reports. No, it's it's B first interaction model. Woohoo! Fifty percent. Your business objective is to maximize the number of sales through your website. Okay, easy. Which of the following metrics should would most directly help you measure performance against this objective? Maximize number of sales. <sighs> this is no e-commerce conversion rate. It sounds like this one. Page value, no, it's not. Bounce rate, no, it's not. Page service. You have to choose one, but I don't think the conversion rate because the rate, if the rate is even though if if the rate is hundred percent, even you have one visit that converted for one U.S. dollar, is that maximizing number of sales? I don't know. So. Out of these options, the e-commerce conversion rate is the best one, but I wouldn't say it's the best one at all. 37. Which of the following would prevent URL destination goal conversions from being recorded? Which of the following would prevent URL destination goal? Misspelling. Yes, it could be in the goal definition you wrote incorrect destination goal. Tracking code is missing from the conversion, but <laughs> that would be really bad. <laughs> the match type in the goal definition is incorrect. The match type, what is that? Uh, no URL destination goals have been fine. I think all of these. Match type, I think that is when you, s if you select like session duration or uh, event instead. Okay, let's continue. What is the best analysis? Analysis tool to use in order to see a traffic comparison of converters versus non-converters. <laughs> uh, Adobe Site Catalyst. No. Um, analysis to see traffic comparison of converters versus non-converters. <sighs> I guess you could. View filters is not good. Report filters, uh, maybe in some special custom dimensions. You could actually use custom dimensions and set. If it's a converted or non-converted, adds a custom dimension. But I would say that the best tool is advanced segments. The, the best, best, but the optimal is to use custom dimensions to set all this stuff, and then use the advanced segment to find it out. Find it out. Okay. You launched several new marketing campaigns. Yay! And want to be notified if any of the campaign leads to over a ten percent increase in gold conversions on a given day. Which tooling will analysis would you use to set up this alert? If it's an alert, there is only the intelligence events. Okay, let's continue. What are UTM parameters? I have a video on that, but let's see which option is it. Parameters that are added to, to custom campaigns in order to. Yes, I would say this. I would say A. Parameters that are added in your website source code to allow. Come from. No. C is params are added to URLs in order to track organic traffic, referral traffic, and CPC traffic. No, because for organic to referral and CPC, you don't add the UTM to Parameters that are added to your site for rent tracking. No, it's A. Okay, easy. Let's continue. 57% complete. Google Analytics can identify that two sessions are from the same user if the sessions happen in the same browser on the same device. 
No, then they would just extend the session. The ses sessions happen on the same day. Yes, by default, if the sessions happened on the same day, but above the session timeout. So if the session timeout is this, it has to be more than that. So more than 30 minutes between. The sessions happen in the same browser. Yes, Google Analytics can differ between them if it's above the session timeout. The sessions occur within 30 minutes of each other. No, then it's... One answer. Can identify the two sessions from the same user if same browser on the same device. Oh, the sessions happen on the same day from different... No, no, no. No, no, no. This is not correct. Happen in the same browser. I would assume that they mean same browser on diff like a Safari on Mac OS and then Safari on iOS. That doesn't work. Okay. The sessions happen in the same browser on the same device and cookies have not been deleted. Okay, boom. So now the Google Merchandise Store recently launched a mobile responsive website. Great, and started a few new ad campaigns. We, when looking at their overall traffic in Google Analytics, they noticed that they have a bounce rate of 85%. That sounds pretty high. Which of the following dimensions would be useful when analyzing the traffic to determine the cause of this high bounce rate? They have a mobile responsive website and a few new ad campaigns. Would be useful, like everything is like always useful. So I would say device category to see if it's mobile or desktop. And then landing page to see which page, and then campaign to see which one of the campaigns, because each campaign perhaps had a different messaging. So I would say all of those. The user ID feature is commonly used with which of the following website scenarios? Users can create an account on your website and log in on all types of devices. Yes. Users can navigate between your website and multiple subdomains within one set. No. Well, no, it's not the, the common usage. Users must navigate to a third-party shopping cart domain to complete a purchase. No, that's not why you use user ID. You have content that is placed on another domain through an iPhone. No, it's a users can create on your website and then log in on different types of devices because you want to see what the, 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 the split of device usage. What analysis tool would you use to analyze the behavior of new customers versus returning customers on your website? Real-time reporting doesn't give you much. It's just the last five minutes. Segmentation is what I... Everything is about segmentation, always. View filters, no, doesn't give much. As, no. Multi-channel funnels, no. Well, you could use multi-channel funnels and have segment. <sighs> I would say segmentation, but you could do the multi-channel funnels with the conversion segments, I guess. It was a long time since I used those. Okay. Which of the following is a hit type tracked by Google Analytics? Page tracking hit, yes. Event tracking hit, yes. E-commerce tracking hit, yes. All of these hits are types tracked in Google Analytics. Yes, yes, yes. True or false? If you have updated your tracking code to analytics.js, oh, this is an old question because Everything is analytics.js these days. Then no additional configuration required to track subdomains. I think that is true. I think GA nowadays always track the topmost part of the domain. So if you have www.mysite.com and then you have subdomain.mysite.com I think by default, if you just drop in the script there, it will track as mysite.com, no matter which subdomain. Your web properties, www.example.com, you set up a destination goal of thank slash thank you and match type of begins with, oh, that's the match type. 
Which of the following pages would trigger a gold conversion? Thank you. Matches the beginning here. And the beginning here. And the beginning there. They would all trigger. Hold. Oh, I didn't realize it had loaded the page. <laughs> when a report is based on data from a large number of sessions, you may see the following notice at the top of the report. This report is based on M sessions. You can adjust the sampling rate of the report by changing the sampling rate in your view settings. It's not in the view settings. Adjusting the session time, no. Adjusting a control in the reporting interface for greater or less precision. You can do that. You can adjust. That's not correct. If you use Google Analytics 360, previously known as Google Analytics Premium, then you can you can still have these, but the the limit is much higher, so it's often not a problem. And then they export to BigQuery as well, so you can do everything in BigQuery, which is fun, but it's quite technical. Okay, let's continue. True or false? <laughs> Once a view is deleted, it cannot be restored. Old days, that was true, but now no. You have. I don't know about the 35 days to restore a view. Perhaps I, you can restore it. Can. Which of the following should you not collect with the Google Analytics e-commerce JavaScript? Product SKUs, you should do that. Purchase amount, you should do that. Billing city, you should do that. Tax amount, you should do that. Credit card number. <laughs> no, 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 no. PII, Personal, personally identifiable information. Credit card number is typically, typically that. You have defined goal X. Goal X is a really bad name of a goal. When someone else comes into your view and sees goal X, what, what does that mean? Whatever. Such that a particular PDF download qualifies as a goal conversion. A user comes to your site once and downloads this PDF five times. One for me, one for my sister, one for my other sister, one for my stepsister, one for my stepbrother, and one for my mom. Five times. Five times. How many gold commercials will be recorded? One. Because goals are only counted counted one time per session, no matter how many times you do them. In contrast to e-commerce transactions. So if you have a goal that is an e-commerce transaction that you set up on the order confirmation page and you purchase twice, there will be two e-commerce transactions, but only one gold conversion for that order confirmation page. One. Your company runs a holiday email campaign for the month of December to drive newsletter sign up. Which of the following metrics would be the best indicator of the campaign's success? They want newsletter sign ups. So I wouldn't say the bounce rate. I wouldn't say the session duration. I wouldn't say the page views. I would say. Assuming that they have set up that a sign up is a conversion, I would say the conversion rate. Uh, but I have too little information for this. Which of the following could be measured by defining a goal in Google Analytics? The percentage of visits that result in a site registration. Yes, if you have an event or a page with the site registration, yes. The percentage of visits that contain only one page view. You can do a goal with how many page views you viewed. The percentage of visits during with which visitors spent at least two minutes on the site. Yes, you can do that. All of these can be a definition of a goal in Google Analytics. Which report would you use to determine the percentage of your site traffic that has already been to your site? Your site traffic is a sessions. So I would say new versus returning report, frequency and recency report is how many times the returning sessions come back. Affinity categories report. I don't even know what affinity means. I'm Swedish. Referral support, no. Sales performance report, no. It's this one. It's A, behavior, new versus returning report. 
When should you use manual tagging? A. You should use manual tagging in order to track all of your advertising campaigns like AdWords or Facebook. Not all of them. For AdWords, it's better with automatic, the auto tagging. You should use manual tagging for any non AdWords custom campaigns. I would say that. You should use manual tagging to track only AdWords campaign. No, not, no. B. Oh, which of the following is not a required parameter in the URL builder? Campaign name, UTM campaign. Campaign medium, UTM medium. Campaign content, UTM content. Campaign source, UTM source. All of these are required. No. Oh, they're not all required. Name is required, medium is required, source is required. Campaign content is not required, but you can have it. I Come on. True or false? When a new view is created, it will show the historical data from the first view you created for the property. When a new view is created, it won't show historical any historical data. Which of the following features allows you to join the data generated by your offline business systems with the online data collected by Google Analytics? Join data. Often you use custom dimensions to put stuff from the offline business systems if you have some kind of connector, but that is not what they mean. Goal tracking, it's not. It's data import because you upload a CSV or have a system automatically upload stuff. And will then you have the CRM data of the offline system and then you have the web data from your interaction and then you join them. Data import. No custom channel grouping is not easy. Segments. I love segments. Are a subset of your which of the following are not true? Not true of analytics segment. Segments are filters that permanently change the data. No. Segments let you isolate and analyze your data. That is true. You can use segments to build custom remarketing lists. Yes, you can build a segment first and then make a remarketing list out of it. Segments represent either subsets of sessions or subsets. Yes. So this is the one that is not true. Only 10 to go. Or 11. What reports would you use to determine if you should consider expanding your advertising to new markets? Okay, so I think this is a a legacy definition of markets. What is a market? Do they mean the geography? I would say that if I have a lot of sources and mediums that come from, I don't know, organic traffic, that is a market. Uh, intelligence, uh, no. Frequency research, no. It's between D and A. I would say, I think they, I think they want the, the geography. I think that's what they consider a market. I don't know. What is an assisted conversion? When one goal completion leads to another... Well, yeah, I, when one traffic source results, because that's a one session, okay. That leads to another session that happens to be a commercial. Which reporting dimension would be useful to reference if you were looking to improve the user experience on your landing page? Which reporting dimension would be useful to reference if you were looking to improve the user experience? What kind of traffic? Language, device category. Um, so if it could be language, if I have a Swedish site, but I have a lot of traffic from non-Swedish speakers, I could use the language dimension. It could be useful. Device category is very user experience. Perhaps it's a lot of mobile traffic and it's only desktop oriented. Traffic type, yes. If it's organic traffic, perhaps they are querying a question. So I would. I, all of them. Go. What does a time lag report indicate? Time lag. Is it the time lag between sessions, I think? Time lag in between goal completions, no. Lag on the load time on the side, no. Time lag in between the original session and goal completion, no. The time lag in between page view during the goal. What? 
time lag in between the original session and a goal completion. I don't know. Time lag in between goal completions. So first I thought time lag was uh, in the frequency, recency and frequency report, but I understand it's in the multi-channel funnel reports. Time lag in between goal completions, time lag on the load time of the site. This is not. Time lag in between the original session and goal completion. I think it's this one. Time lag in between page view during the goal. No, no, not during the goal completion. Lag. Uh, because I think the lag is that you first come on a, as a, on a session and then there's a lag. How long is it until you actually convert it? How would you determine the mobile e commerce conversion rate for page traffic? Go to audience mobile overview, add a second element showing traffic type. You could do that. Go to acquisition all traffic channels, add a second element showing category in order to see device category in order to see device category in order to see the paid traffic search come from. I would do that perhaps or both. D. In analytics, you can only see traffic coming from desktop or from mobile together. I, both. You could use both. Why can AdWords clicks differ from analytics sessions in your report? AdWords clicks from analytics session. <laughs> the answer is you search, and then you click a result. You have one click and one session. And perhaps it's not you land on the correct page, but you, on the correct site, but not on the correct page. So you back tweak your search and then you make another click but it's still the same session so you have two clicks click click but one session so some visitors may have a javascript say this that's not it some visitors may be blocking cookies it's not it clicks and sessions are different metrics well Actually, some visitors may have JavaScript to say means that the sessions won't be captured with the JavaScript. Some visitors may be blocking cookies, and you perhaps haven't set up because there is cookie-less tracking. So I get confused. I would say this is the main one, but these are possible explanations. So I would say all of the above. Odd tagging is a feature that is used with which traf type of traffic? Paid AdWords. Any search engine that is not from not correct. Address campaign traffic. Just website. No, no. Boom. Running out on time. Only forty-two minutes left. True or false? Yes. When you share a link to a custom report, you share the data in the report. No. Sharing a link to a customer only shares a template for the report. You don't share the data. So you can share a link to a custom report that is a template, but. The one you're sharing to may not have access to your data, to your account. When you create a new channel grouping in a view, you can A. Immediately select it in the acquisition overview and channels report. I think you can. Apply it directly and see historical data classifier in new channel definitions. Yes. Change how reports display data without changing this. Yes. I think all of those. New channel grouping because they're custom channel groups and default channel group. This is difficult because if you're using if you're changing the default channel grouping, it will not change the historical date. It will not modify it. But if you make a custom channel grouping, then the channel grouping will look retroactively with the new channel definitions. So I would say that every all of these are correct. Tricky one. Difference between default and custom. Whoa. True or false? The order in which filters appear in your view settings matters. The order in which filters appear in your view settings. Yes. Yes. Because you might perhaps remove all internal traffic from your local network. If you do that, yeah. Yes. Okay. 
which dimensions, which dimension is not included in the AdWords reporting section of Google Analytics? AdWords reporting. AdWords reporting. I think you have bid adjustment. I think you have bid adjustment, yes, and you have keyword. I'm not sure on invalid click. Destination URL you do have. True view video ad in the AdWords reporting. Oh. True view video ad. That's one type of display. So I thought you had to enable another sections, section that is not the AdWords reporting. Invalid clicks. What is an invalid click? Oh, do they mean clicks that are made by bots that AdWords doesn't count? So, okay, so this two, I don't, I think it's make, it makes the most sense that this will not, the invalid click will not be imported to Google Analytics AdWords section. I'm unsure. Whoa. Yes, yes, I didn't know. <laughs> I forgot to check the how many questions I had done. Yes, way, <laughs> no preparation. 65 out of 70 questions, correct, 92%. That's not exactly 100%. Do I just close the exam? What do I do now? Can I reload here, refresh? Passed. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this very fun episode to qualify. Now I'm a Google Analytics individual qualification certified whatever subscribe write comments below and uh, tell me what you want me to do more videos of and i will see you in the next video bye